Hey, what is up YouTube and Twitch? We are live everywhere and this will be its own YouTube video as well. We are here to review the cards for the new expansion showdown in the Badlands coming out in like uh, two and a half weeks or something like that. We're going to go class by class. The first one we'll be talking about in this video is Death Knight. So Death Knight is one of the Excavate classes and if you want more details on Excavate, I do go over it in the neutral card review, which I'll probably link if I remember. But as well, I'll just put here wherever I have this link here. These are all the Excavate cards that you are able to have access to. Well, almost all of them, because all of the Excavate classes, including Death Knight, have a special tier four legendary that you can get on top of these. As well, they have the additional class cards that allow you to more easily excavate. So those are the class you're going to want to do the excavates for. So I guess with that, we'll start with one of the excavate cards here, I guess. Um, Skeleton Crew is a 4 mana 3-3. Three, three. Battle Cry, excavate a treasure, it costs 0. This is an undead also, by the way. And this here in the tooltip, oh, I should make this bigger actually. You can see the, um, you can see the prize here. This is a 4 mana 5-5 five, five Elemental Beast. Battle Cry, resurrect your highest cost minion, give it plus 2, plus 2, reborn, and lifesteal. So, like, that's just, like, Un unbelievable right as long as you don't die you're gonna have a giant life still mini and if it doesn't get hard removed like you're, you're just gonna win right basically that's the idea and um by the way this mana cheats it to zero as well so um whenever you're able to do that you can just play it instantly um yeah so anyway this is like one of those where it's pretty darn expensive if you're only excavating like a tier one. The idea of this card obviously is that you would not want to just excavate a tier one. The tier ones would not really, I mean, it's not like it would be bad, but you know, you want to at least be excavating a tier two or a tier three with this, but ideally a tier four. But in general, yeah, excavate's a powerful mechanic. Yeah, it's going to be very impactful. You're going to want to draft a lot of these because as long as, unless you're like, I think the one exception is if you're like 28 picks in and you don't have any excavate yet, you're just going to want to take all the excavate because the upside is going to be crazy and the downside really isn't there. It's just really good. So you're going to want to take um, a lot of these. Um, let's see. The other excavate card we have here is Reap What You Sow. This is a three mana. Doesn't actually, doesn't have any... Um, spell school or anything it's just three mana deal three damage excavate a treasure um so this one again it's like you're giving up a little bit for the excavate keyword but i mean three mana deal three isn't that bad right it's still i mean it's kind of bad by modern standards you can get one mana deal three if, to a minion this goes face so there's that upside but yeah you're you're paying for the excavate keyword but you'll be happy to do that. This is a common card. You'll see it a lot. And the bonus is if you draft 10 of these, then you can just send them all face and win automatically, right? Although the Azurite Rattle probably killed them before you even need to do that. But yeah, it's, this is one of the, I think this is one of the better Excavate cards that we've seen so far. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, next up, let's talk about some of the other Excavate synergy we have here. First up, Pile of Bones. 2 mana, 2, 1, Undead. This has um, a Frost Rune and an Unholy, so that's a little bit of a tricky combo to get. Pretty much, you only out of this, the only way you're going to get this is to do go 2 Unholy, 1 Frost, because I don't really recommend going for other rune combinations that would allow this. Or you can do it in Rainbow too, actually. But otherwise, it's a little tricky. But anyway, 2 mana, 2, 1, Death Rattle. Next time you excavate, resummon this. So this thing theoretically just keeps coming back, right? When you resummon it, it's going to have the death rattle again, and then it's just going to keep coming back. Well, I don't know that this is really worth it though. Like playing a two mana two one is really bad and okay, it comes back, but is that really that good? I mean, if you have a lot of excavate, I mean, sure, a, a two one that just keeps coming back, it'll probably do something, right? But I, I, I can't imagine this is really all that valuable. Oh yeah, and Gumachi asked in Twitch chat, yeah, when you get the four mana treasure, it just resets. So you go back to level one and then you get to do it again. You can theoretically get the level four again if you have enough excavates. So yeah, this card, I don't think you're really going to want to draft super highly unless you really just have a whole lot of excavates. And then I believe the last card that has excavate synergy, after this we'll just talk about all of them. Harrowing Ox, seven mana, seven, seven, undead beast taunt. So a big minion, but uh, 7 mana 7 7 taunts, still pretty bad, but it has the battle cry. If you've excavated twice your next card this turn, costs 7 less, which isn't much of a condition. I mean, that means you can't play it on 7 and then play a 10 drop the next turn, right? But other than that, I mean, you're not going to have 
trouble uh, using this necessarily. If you had to, you could just wait until turn eight to play an eight, an eight drop with it, right? So yeah, I, I mean, in theory, this is like a zero mana seven, seven. Realistically, you're probably not gonna have another seven unless you have multiple of these. That would be kind of hilarious, actually. You could just chain like five of these, theoretically. It's an epic, so you're not gonna see enough of them for that to ever happen, but you never know, right? You can discover undeads or beasts and stuff and then get a bunch of these. But yeah, uh, realistically though, I mean, if you're getting... If you're able to just cheat like another four mana card with this, you're feeling pretty good about that, right? So the epic bug incoming, don't don't give them any ideas. I think overall too, especially with this one, you you're probably gonna have excavated twice by turn seven anyway. So that's not gonna be much of a condition, obviously. That makes it so overall like you probably might not want this in like a super if you're really trying to be the aggressive deck you might just not want this because it's too late of an impact but if you're trying to just stay alive it's just this is just going to be a way to just wall your opponent with a big taunt so it seems reasonable i think especially in slow decks because it should be a relatively especially while the new set offering bonus is in it's not a hard condition to meet with that let's talk about the rest of the cards that don't have to do with excavate the first one here fistful of corpses no comment but this is a blood and unholy rune card one mana spell deal damage to a minion equal to your corpses and by the way this doesn't consume the corpses or anything it's you just get damage equal to your corpses so it's essentially i mean this is something comparable to like light it burns or something it's just you just get to kill anything you want eventually assuming you have you know as many corpses as you need which you should by the time you really need to kill something anyway the only real downside is if you just played your corpse bride right and you're not going to be able to you're, you're gonna have used up all your corpses but other than that this is essentially just one mana kill anything so really really good don't think there's too much more to say there because of the rune combination uh not every class can do it but for example if you're like double unholy blood especially i mean this is an incredible card to have so it's usually just going to be a better obliterate because it doesn't it's cheaper and it doesn't deal damage to yourself right so just very very strong next up we have here is corpse farm three mana unholy rune spend up to eight corpses to summon a random minion of that cost I mean, what's funny is like isn't this just like a much worse corpse bride it kind of is right i mean it could high roll but it could also low roll it only goes up to eight, unlike unless corp unlike corp spread, it goes up to ten, and you don't get the four four. But you, you're it's three mana instead of eight five, but that doesn't really matter. I don't think it's that great, but the thing is, is that if you don't have ways to spend corpses, you're gonna be happy to spend corpses any way you can, basically, and then that just makes this really good, just because it's better than not being able to use them at all. So if you don't have corpse spending, you'd value this really highly. But I think if you do, you just wouldn't really love this that much because it would be pretty late before you'd really want to use this. Because especially you don't want to deactivate your fistful of corpses, for example, right? Yeah, it's like, it's like one of those things, essentially, you'd be pretty happy to have one of. You're not going to be offered a bunch because it's epic, most likely. So you'd be pretty reasonable in most decks to have one. So it's a reasonably draftable card. Next up, we have Crop Rotation. Got a lot to talk about this card because um, three mana spell in only a single Unholy Room summon four 1-1 one, one Undead with Rush that die at the end of the turn. And uh, these are these gnomes with Rush that they are undead. Um, why is this really significant? Well, um, this card exists, Sickly Grimewalker. So this, this two-card combo, which is two common cards oh this is a rare actually but um you can also spell discover this but anyway two pretty common cards uh that just assassinates four minions at once and it generates four corpses by the way yeah so unless they like ban this card which i think they should do i think they should have already frankly um that's just gonna be a thing because this also generates corpses it's just a really good card it's effectively you know the thing that Possessifier is really good and this is just Possessifier without the 3-3 three, three body for two mana cheaper so it's about as good, but also one of the limiters of Possessifier is that it doesn't summon Undead, so you don't have... The, uh, this is only one synergy. There are other synergies with Undeads. You have two, right? So all of those you actually get now. So this is just... Um, 
the, the amount of things it enables are crazy so it's going to be very uh very very impactful and um going to be probably a big reason that unholy remains the king of arena for the time being next up uh talking about another thing that's going to keep death knight the king of arena and also unholy the king of arena farmhand basically another discover four double unholy three mana four three undead bow cry discover an undead quick draw it costs two less so why is this significant um i mean why is it not significant um you can get discovers by the way are not limited to runes you can't discover triple runes anymore but for example let me see do i have it here yeah i do like i mean you can get things from other rune combinations if you're not even blood you can get patchwork you can get just you know you can't get like marigar anymore but you can get there's a lot of just really powerful things you can get but including that is cards that were banned from arena like malignant horror you can now discover a mana cheated potentially malignant horror as well so this like is going to be incredibly painful because i mean even if they ban sickly grime walker you're still going to be you're still going to see it discovered pretty darn often so um yeah um maybe we say more i mean it's anyway it's a three mana four three with a discover discovering undead is really good in death knight so it, it's an, it's an absurdly powerful card you would pick it anytime you see it pretty much it's just it's a five star card i don't always give star ratings but yeah that's a five star next up ma and paw this is a blood and unholy card it's a little confusing but anyway so it's also an undead four mana one eight at the end of your turn, gain five corpses. At the start of your turn, spend five corpses to give your hero plus five health. So essentially what that means is, is that every turn it stays alive, you gain five health. Because you, you gain five corpses, but then you lose them at the start of your turn. So you're never actually able to use them until this thing dies. While it's alive, you keep getting health. You can This is maximum health, so you can go up to, you know, theoretically, like 100 plus health, potentially. But once it dies as well, it also gives you six corpses. Assuming it actually died, then you're getting six corpses for it. So this is a card that you really want if you're trying to build like a late game deck. The thing that would make this really good, the situation would be like, if you have something like Primus, essentially, this card is just going to be really annoying. It's not going to die. It's going to keep giving you health. Your opponent's just going to ignore it probably and go phase. But then you just play Primus and swing the game on, on its head and then your opponent's screwed, right? Or you have any of these other kind of swings like, oh yeah, by the way, like that, you know, that four assassinates in one, that kind of thing. And then you're just going to be like really safe. That's what you're going to want to do with this. It, the thing is, is that, you know, on its own, a four mana one eight just isn't having enough impact, but that's where it would be useful. Having said that, you know, again, like this isn't a legendary slot and you're just not going to usually want to draft it over any of those other things that would actually create that swing. But it has, you know, a theoretical place in a really strong deck. The last one we have here, this is the 10th card, the Legendary for Death Knight, Reska the Pit Boss. 20 mana with a Unholy Rune and a Frost Rune. 6-3 Rush Undead, another card that you can discover off the Undead. Cost one last for each minion that died this game. Death Rattle, take control of a random enemy minion. Uh, we are rating on four arena so this is essentially like i mean this is i've seen a lot of comparisons this is a kind of like a new sylvanas because it is like a mind control but it's not targeted but it can run if there's two minions on the board you can rush one and steal the other it's a little bit specific but a couple of things to note is that this is each minion that died this game so that includes your enemies as well anything you kill or any of your hero powers or anything else that dies even if it doesn't generate a corpse all of that is going to do it so it's a lot faster than if you had to create like 20 corpses for example so anyway like in theory if your opponent knew about this they could keep only one minion on board but you know this is arena where you have other things to worry about and you're not playing around specific legendaries so your opponent's not going to play around this so there's going to be a lot of board states the ideal board state is they have one mid-sized minion and one huge minion and then you just kill the mid-sized minion and steal the big minion and then you win but in any case there's no situation where it's going to be bad because this is it's not going to be that long like probably around like what turn nine or so this thing's going to be 
basically free so i mean it's just even if you're not getting like a perfect steal you're getting uh, just absurd efficiency out of it regardless so um a very very powerful card outside of like i mean you have to be like two unholy frost or rainbow basically to actually draft it but you're gonna see it off of uh, unholy disc you're gonna see it off of the undead discovers as well and as well potentially the frost and unholy discovers so a surprisingly common card most likely as a result of just how discoverable it is and it's so it might be something you actually think about but yeah so and i think it's just a very very powerful card i don't know that i would pick it over like primus it's probably not quite that good but it's definitely very very strong so yeah it's a very very good card so overall yeah just a review of all the death knight cards they're all really really good so based off of this um it's very likely death knight will continue to be the strongest card the strongest class in arena for a couple months at least unless blizzard something does something but anyway with that appreciate everyone for hanging out oh yeah you can yield alert it too oh god appreciate everyone for hanging out we'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye